The Pokemon World Championships just went down. Congratulations to all of the winners. And, you know, congrats to everybody that participated. Amazing that you got to take part in such a wonderful event. Uh, maybe someday I'll get, get to be there in some capacity. But I, I'm so happy for everybody that got to be a part of the World Championship experience. And at the closing ceremonies, as far as the Pokemon TCG goes, we got a ton of new reveals, new mechanics, uh, old, mecha um, old mechanic returning, and we got to see a bunch of new cards, which we're going to cover all of them right here. I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also, in terms of presentation, we're trying something a little different here. So if it looks a little weird, I'm sorry. I'm trying to step up my production game here. So we've got the PowerPoint pulled up. And let's jump into some of the new reveals of cards in, in the TCG. And the first big one, we have Ancient and Future Pokemon making their debut. We can tell because they've got the tag on the the top right of the card and we also see in the border i like the the treatment of the border here we're on the ancient side we've got sort of like a sandy background fading into the regular background and then on the future cards we've got the sort of techno uh, background there as well and i would imagine that these are going to work like you know fusion strike cards rapid strike single strike and then you know the team team plasma cards before where you kind of have this modifier on the card and then there's going to be different types of pokemon trainers and items and probably energy that interact with them in specific ways I think one one example off the top of my head was Octillery, where it's got the Rapid Strike search, and it lets you grab one card from your deck that has the Rapid Strike tag on it. So I would imagine more cards interacting like this with the Ancient and Future concept. We got a bunch of reveals for new cards in this style, including Screamtail for one one Psychic Energy slap. Side note, Psychic psychic pokemon these are all basic pokemon by the way there's no evolution lines for these paradox pokemon that are either ancient or future so at this point in time i would not expect to see evolution pokemon in this style um screamtail psychic pokemon 90 hp yes it kind of looks like a jigglypuff uh they these are all like ancient or future versions of existing pokemon uh, for one psychic energy slap is 30 and then roaring scream for a psychic and a colorless this attack does 20 damage to one of your opponent's pokemon for each damage counter on this pokemon so if you can build this up to the maximum level that is 160 damage for only two energy so interesting move here we've got iron bundle with the hyper blower ability once during your turn if this pokemon is on your bench you may switch out your opponent's active pokemon to the bench so kind of a a gusting card of sorts this can be really annoying especially for decks that don't run much in the way of retreat options and then it's got the refrigerated stream attack one water two colorless energy does 80 damage and if the defending pokemon is an evolution pokemon it can't attack during your opponent's next turn this is a incredibly annoying attack and you can power this up really quickly with backscalibur so this could be an interesting one of tech in water decks going forward iron moth is a yeah it's basically volcarona and it's got the ability thermal reactor once during your turn when this pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot you may move any amount of fire energy from your other pokemon to it you don't really need to load up too much it's it's attack heat ray is two fire and one colorless only does 120 damage and during your next turn this pokemon can't use heat ray so you're probably not gonna be using this one all that much but i brought this in here because it is one of the new cards and we can see that it still has a um a special you know full art slash special illustration rare take on these cards as well which is really nice to see brute bonnet has the ability toxic powder once during a turn if this pokemon has an ancient booster energy capsule attached you may make both active pokemon poison now it's probably a tool of some sort they didn't actually show what the ancient booster energy capsule is however this kind of speaks to that idea of ancient and future cards that are tagged as such having special attributes and interactions between one another so we get our first look at that here and then rampaging hammer for two dark and a colorless does 120 damage and during your next turn this pokemon can't attack not a particularly strong attack especially considering it's three energy but the the poison 
could be kind of cool depending on what kind of deck you're playing. Roaring Moon EX is nuts. Dark type Pokemon, 230 damage. And we've got the move Frenzied Gouging for two dark and a colorless. It, it instantly knocks out your opponent's active Pokemon. If your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out this way, this attack does 100 or 200 damage to itself. Yes, you're doing a lot of damage to yourself, and you're basically leaving Roar Roaring Moon there to get KO'd on the following turn. But if you are getting an instant KO on, say, a multi prize Pokemon at the end of the game, this could be your game winning attack right here. Go turn one going second with Dark Patch, you could power this up. There are other ways of potentially powering up uh, Roaring Moon EX in the immediate term. You could use something like either the Galarian Moltres V or Galarian Moltres with Energy Switch and then move all that energy to Roaring, Roaring Moon. However you do it, there are ways of powering this up quickly and getting an instant KO, which is crazy. And then Calamity Storm does 100 damage and you may discard a stadium in play. If you do this, this attack does 120 more damage with the popularity of stadiums in the game. It's probably not going to be that hard to get 220 damage out of this move. It's also dark type, so we're hitting stuff like Guard of War and Mew for weakness. And I think this card is very strong and I, I imagine this seeing some play in the future when it's released later in 2023. Iron Valiant is basically the new, like the futuristic Gallade, 220 HP psychic type. It's got the ability Tachyon Bits. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may put two damage counters to one of your opponent's Pokemon. I always love being able to drop damage counters, but having to move Iron Valiant into the active to do it feels a little weird, maybe a little clunky. Like I don't think you're gonna play a billion switch cards just to spam the tachyon bits ability over and over again but hey that might be enough that actually might be enough of a strategy if you're taking out a bunch of smaller pokemon that like if you're taking out comp phase and stuff that way um combine that with alakazam and who knows what else maybe there's more to this card than i think at the moment and then it's got the attack laser blade for 200 damage during your next turn this pokemon can attack maybe with the amount of switching you're doing the laser blade doesn't really uh matter too much like the the whole restriction on the pokemon can't attack i don't know could be cool um this one doesn't excite me as much as roaring moon but this one could be cool we also get to see the return of a spec cards in 20 24 a spec cards were item cards that were incredibly powerful and you could only have one of them in your deck now during the world championships they didn't actually show any new a spec cards the most we got was this silhouette uh of the cards i love the color scheme of this by the way this sort of like neon pink with the the neon blue oh that is fantastic but we do have a couple of examples of older a spec cards that i'll just show here for reference uh there's no guarantee that any of these cards are coming back i would expect that maybe we'll see a couple of old ones come back and maybe some new ones as well i probably new ones uh but yeah some examples of this computer search for one this is one i keep hearing about it's still i think this still gets a ton of play and expanded where you get to discard two cards from your hand and search your deck for a card any card of your choice put it into your hand and then shuffle your deck incredibly powerful uh card right there dousing machine you get to discard two cards from your hand and grab a trainer card from your discard pile and put that into your hand and master ball just search your deck for a pokemon reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck with pokemon search being what it is where you're you, you, you can kind of get basics or evolutions you have to discard two cards you have to flip a coin what have you master ball is a crazy powerful card just get one pokemon of your choice and maybe it's not as strong as computer search or dousing machine or whatever else but uh just some examples of a spec cards from the past again we don't know what the new a spec cards will look like but I'm excited to see what that that could mean. I think the the mechanic is great. I loved Radiant Pokemon having only one of those. Uh, a one of item card could also be amazing as well. Terra Garchomp EX was revealed. Now these are we're going into the announcements that happened before the closing ceremonies. Um, I haven't had a chance to cover these, uh, but there are some really cool cards in here that I wanted to talk about. So here we go, Terra Garchomp. EX and this one has been type shifted. Garchomp is usually a 
a ground type or a dragon type and here we see it as a water type this is a stage two pokemon it's got the the terra trait so it can't be attacked on the bench and for one fighting energy has hydrolander does 160 damage and you get to attach up to three energy from your discard pile to your bench pokemon in any way you like you are getting two hit ko's on all of the almost all of the multi-prize pokemon in the game and you are doing a ton of energy acceleration so this is a very cool attack and then for two two colorless sonic dive discard two energy from this pokemon and this attack does 120 damage to one of your opponent's pokemon so yes this is a bench snipe attack for colorless energy 120 is okay it's an okay attack to finish something off or, or take out a smaller Pokemon. I, I don't necessarily think it's worth going up to a stage two for 120 snipe damage, but um, it is an interesting second option here. And some cards that I think could work with Terra Garchomp EX include Cheryl, where you get to heal off all damage from evolution Pokemon and discard energy. And then you just attack with 160, you take a hit, you, you play Cheryl, then reattach that fighting energy, and then do 160 damage and accelerate even more energy, which would be absolutely bonkers. There is a new Groudon card that needs, that, that does damage based on the number of fighting energy you discard. And we'll talk about that in a sec. And then also even just like Rapid Strike Urshifu, where you could load up three fighting energy onto an Urshifu, get it ready for G-Max Rapid Flow on the next turn. And uh, Terra Garchomp EX has free retreat, so you can easily pivot into Urshifu and get that massive multi-prize KO or whatever it might be. Very cool. Terra Mewtwo. EX is a basic lightning Pokemon, 230 HP, and it's got the attacks transfer charge for one psychic energy, attach up to two basic psychic energy from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any way you like, and Photon Kinesis for two psychic energy does 10 damage, plus this attack does 30 more damage for each psychic energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Yes, we have seen this attack before. It's basically the Shadow Rider Calyrex Max Geist attack, except it's on a basic and it needs one less energy, but they have to be psychic energy. And I think that Shadow Rider Calyrex is a very intriguing partner for this card as the underworld durability on Shadow Rider accelerates energy to other psychic Pokemon, which can help build up Mewtwo, Mewtwo's Photon Kinesis attack, as well as Shadow Rider's attack. So there's a lot of synergy there. Also, Mewtwo is a single, or only drops two prizes when KO'd, which gives it a, which makes a lot of sense in the Shadow Rider deck because Shadow Rider right now, you only have to knock out two Shadow Riders to win. And that's usually like four attacks. And if you throw in a two prize attacker here, like Terra Mewtwo EX, then you you skew the prize race in a way that makes the fight a little more even. Now, some of the caveats here. Uh, this is a lightning type Pokemon. You will be hitting stuff like a Palkia as that's starting to see more play and other flying type like Lugia, for example, for weakness, which is kind of cool. Uh, you are weak to fighting though, and that's usually a matchup where you are strong in. So you're kind of taking an L on that with Mewtwo EX. And on top of that, the acceleration for both Shadow Rider Calyrex and Gardevoir, and we didn't get to talk about Gardevoir just yet, um, that neither of them can accelerate energy directly to Mewtwo because both of those abilities require accelerating to psychic Pokemon. So you're going to have to find another way to power up Terra Mewtwo EX. Granted, it's only two energy, so it's not that hard to get energy on there, but uh, it is an extra consideration here. So I think Terra Mewtwo EX is pretty cool and it, it could see some play in the immediate term with like Shadow Rider and maybe even Gardevoir EX. I, it's a little weird because you're going to have to load a bunch of energy on a bunch of different Pokemon versus the current way of playing Gardevoir where you're like loading up as much energy as you can onto one main attacker to build up its main attack. Um, so this could be, and on top of that, if you're accelerating, oh, okay. I was going to say you're, you're going to do damage to Mewtwo, but you can't accelerate to Mewtwo. So there's some potential partners here. Uh, I don't necessarily think they're they're perfect partners per se. I think the Shadow Rider one makes a little more sense than Gardevoir, but both could be cool. Terra Skeledurge EX 
is a metal Pokemon. It's been type shifted to metal, 330 HP, which is massive. And it's got the ability Explosive Song. Once during your turn, you may discard a fire energy card from your hand in order to use this ability. And during this turn, your Pokemon's attacks do 60 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. This could be any attack, but because you have to discard fire energy, it makes a lot more sense in a fire deck. And uh, this ability is nuts. Being able to do a damage boost of 60 is really going to push a lot of your Pokemon's attacks over the top. And I think at least the one of, of these in, in fire decks feels like awesome. <laughs> it also has the move Raster Burn for two fire energy, does 160 damage, and this attack's damage isn't affected by your opponent's active Pokemon. So 160 Shred. Shred isn't as relevant at in the immediate term. Yes, a handful of people play Mimikyu, which blocks attacks from EX and Pokemon V, but Mimikyu you hasn't been nearly as popular as some of the the previous walls in the past like a mill tank so i don't think you're going to be attacking with this much but it is a nice option to have there as well uh some of the potential partners for this card include skeledurge ex you're already playing the the fue coco line and you could pair the new skeledurge with the old one from paldea evolved you end up turning this burning voice attack from 270 damage all the way up to 350 yeah no uh 60 damage 330 damage that's a, almost a one shot on everything in the game which is incredible charizard ex you could pair this with as well and you're going to be doing a starting at 180 plus 60 so you're starting at 240 damage and working your way up Whew. and then even something like an entei v where that's doing 220 damage to start and you get the the power boost in there and you're now doing 280 damage max with a basic v and you could put a bravery charm on there to give it 280 hp could be a very hot combo Terra Frostlass EX has the ability just out of reach. When this Pokemon's in the active spot and is knocked out, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent takes one less prize card for that knockout. And it's also got the attack Frost Bullet for two water energy. I should note Frostlass, normally a water type Pokemon, and it's been sh type shifted to grass. Um, does 140 damage in this attack, does 20 damage to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. So 140 to the active, 20 to the snipe, or 20, 20 bench snipe. It's, it's not bad. It's a okay attack. Not my favorite. The ability's kind of cool. Having a multi-prize Pokemon that only, that, that has a chance of only dropping one could really mess up the math for your opponent. Um, it is compatible with Baxcalibur because Baxcalibur can accelerate energy to any of your Pokemon. They don't have to be water Pokemon to accelerate energy to them with Baxcalibur. Um, you, it also works with the Chilling Rain Frostlass for whatever that's worth. Frost over accelerates one basic water energy from the discard pile to one of your Pokemon when you evolve from Snorunt to this Frostlass. So there's a little bit of energy acceleration there. And I guess one of the other big benefits is that you hit dark types for weakness. And dark types are one of the most appealing typings in the game right now, Charizard EX. You are going to be hitting that for 280 damage. Well, all of these for 280 damage. It does kind of suck, though. You're not getting a one shot on Charizard without any extra modifiers there, which does feel kind of bad. But you are doing a pretty big chunk of change on Charizard when Charizard is... Um, when Charizard is going crazy and you're not hitting it's not hitting you for weakness which is kind of cool as well Darkrai V-Star I I recently did a video on this I might not be out by the time you see this it should be up soon uh Darkrai V-Star is actually kind of cool right now and you are one-shotting that and they're also getting a one-shot on the Tyranitar V for only two energy which is pretty efficient Groudon is a basic Pokemon fighting 130 HP. It's got the attack overflowing power for one colorless energy. It lets you attach a basic fighting energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. A little bit of energy acceleration, not particularly good. And then for two fighting and a colorless, Magma Purge does 60 damage and you may you may discard up to four energy from your Pokemon. This attack does 60 damage for each card you discarded this way. So this caps out at 240 damage. It is a lot of energy to put on a basic basic uh, Pokemon 
uh, and getting fighting energy on there can be kind of tricky. It does pair well with the the new Garchomp. I I don't think this card is going to see a lot of play, but it is interesting to see. And some potential partners here, the Garchomp, Terra Garchomp BX. You could use Coridon for energy acceleration, and you could use Gutsy Pickaxe to accelerate to this Groudon as well. Bombardier EX is a basic colorless Pokemon, 200 HP, and it's got the attacks Fast Carry for one colorless energy. If you go first, you can use this attack on your first turn. Search your deck for up to three basic Pokemon, and put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. Really amazing setup option there, three, like half filling your bench in one go. That being said, you are burning your first attachment on getting this set up and you might be able to attach more energy on the following turn depending on what deck you're playing something to keep in mind but certain decks are going to want to have this as a setup card and then for three colorless shadow wind 130 damage and you may shuffle this pokemon and all attached cards into your deck just a cool way of doing some incremental damage or taking out a smaller single prize pokemon if you can get the energy on there and then get it out of play so it's no longer a liability mantike we've got another baby pokemon coming back and for a for the cost of zero you can do fluffy healing heal 120 damage from one of your bench pokemon i don't know if it's worth it this one's only a 30 hp and it's guaranteed to get knocked out on the following turn but if it means you are taking your opponent is taking out this mantike instead of what what you really want to protect maybe it's worth it eveltal has the attacks cross cut 30 damage for two colorless energy and if your opponent's active pokemon is an evolution pokemon this attack does 60 more damage i don't think this is good enough nor are nor is dark edge for two dark and a colorless 120 damage and discard an energy from this pokemon so let's move on technical machines are back these are classified as tools you'll be attaching these to pokemon and you can use this att card's attack instead of your pokemon's own attack and you have to discard this card at the end of your turn so you're going to want to make sure that you attach it and and use that attack before the end of the turn presumably you can't hold on to this for multiple turns so attach it use it let it go and some tms we get to see here include uh energy turbo for one colorless energy you search your deck for up to two basic energy cards and attach them to your bench pokemon in any way you like some really cool at energy acceleration this kind of works like bolton v I should have had the graphic ready to go. I'm just coming up with that just now. But any sort of energy acceleration, especially turn one going second, this can be pretty handy if you are a deck that is energy hungry. And you can also use Arvin to go and get this as Arvin can grab an item and a tool. So it makes it a little easier to set up the combo and get that energy acceleration rolling. Sneak attack for three colorless energy. This attack does 100 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon with any damage counters on it so this one may be not as useful it's a little more situational you're going to need three energy on your your pokemon anyway and there has to be damage on the attack the the person or the pokemon that you want to attack but this gives you a snipe attack in scenarios where you may not have a snipe attack to begin with so something like arceus v star for example you could pop this onto arceus v star and now you get a, a snipe attack there in the mid to late game as well which can make that really helpful and i can't think of all the use cases off the top of my head right now but there are going to be decks where this is a a cool option because you just don't have sniping damage in the deck otherwise and yeah manaphy is going to be a problem for this card manaphy will block the sneak attack because it is damage and not damage counters however not every deck plays manaphy uh, you could take out manaphy first you could play canceling cologne to nullify the ability and on top of that because of sneak attack your opponent may look at your deck and think okay they're not playing any sort of bench sniping so i don't have to bench manaphy and then bam you whip out the sneak attack and then you bench snipe and at that point it is too late rika is a new supporter card you look at the top four cards of your deck and put two of them into your hand then shuffle the other two cards and put them into the bottom of your deck it's kind of like colrus's experiment you only get two cards and you don't have to throw any in the loss zone but i think most players are probably still going to prefer 
Culver's experiment because you get to dig a little deeper into the deck and get yourself three cards instead of two. I, I don't think this is a bad card. I just think Culver's is, is better at the moment, but there might be a couple of decks that don't want to Lost Zone stuff and maybe Rika is the answer to that. Larry, a fan favorite trainer from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, has the, the attribute flip a coin. If heads, search your deck for up to two Pokemon and put them into your hand. If Tails, search your deck for a basic Pokemon and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. I, I don't like the fact that it's a coin flip and having to flip, getting two Pokemon is, of your choice is incredibly powerful, but having a coin flip tied to it is pretty rough and I don't like that. So I probably personally wouldn't play this in any of my decks, but there might be some decks that would value having this as an option. Gorgeous Mantle may be one of the most intriguing cards we have seen yet where if the the pokemon this card is attached to does not have a rule box it gets a hundred extra hp when it is knocked out and your opponent takes one more prize card for knocking it out so yeah pokemon ex pokemon v uh have rule boxes so there are you know i mean there's been an ongoing discussion about the multi-prize pokemon and how do single prize pokemon keep up and here is a really interesting tool that kind of evens things out where you can have a a single prize pokemon getting an extra 100 hp and this could open up a whole world of cards that we haven't really been using and make them way more viable in the current meta and yeah you're going to to drop two prizes when these get knocked out but in certain cases that might totally be worth it off the top of my head i don't even think this is the best example but you can take brainwave gardevoir from chilling rain throw the gorgeous mantle on there give it 240 hp and when Gardevoir accelerates energy to it, you can now accelerate from zero to 11 basic psychic energy from the discard pile, and you can hit for 390 damage, which is a one shot on everything in the game. And if you're doing this in the late game, it, like if this is your final attack, the fact that it drops two prizes doesn't matter. And that is just one of potentially many different Pokemon that don't have a rule box that could benefit from a card like Gorgeous Mantle. All right, I know that was a massive update. There were a ton of new cards and I wanted to fly. I wanted to showcase all of them and fly through them as fast as I could. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the video. I am very excited for the Pokemon trading card game and the cards that we have seen. From a gameplay standpoint, I think the game is headed in the right direction and we're seeing a lot of... Uh, cool mechanics from the past coming back and, and new takes on on just the ways of playing the game. And I think that the game is going to be getting even better going forward. But what say you? What do you think about all of this Pokemon TCG news? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. Some quick plugs before I get out of here. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at In Third Person. You can find me on Twitch at In Third Person, where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And check out the website, InThirdPerson.com, for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.